Hello folks! As we keep traversing eastward through New England, we now reach our 14th state, Rhode Island. This is the smallest state in the United States, and it's about time we entered this state. Can't forget about little old Rhode Island. To answer your top burning question, no, Rhode Island is not an island. It is very well connected to the rest of the American mainland. Although the state has some other islands that you can access by car since there are bridges now in time. When you hear of Rhode Island, what do you think of? Do you think of nice rocky beaches? Do you think of sort of high-class yuppie people? Do you think of Family Guy? Well, we are here in Rhode Island for the first time to explore just what Rhode Island is like. I think it would be just totally unfair to debut Rhode Island without going to its center city. This is the most populous city in Rhode Island, for as small of a state as Rhode Island might be. But here we are in Providence. As you can tell by our surroundings, Providence, Rhode Island is a very, very old city, dating back to colonial times. It's also the capital of Rhode Island, the ocean state. I'm dressed up a little bit differently, and that's to blend in with this environment. We are at Brown University. This is, I think, our second Ivy League university visited, actually. If you go all the way back to the beginning of my videos, I went to Ithaca and explored Cornell University a bit. But, yeah, I want to blend in, so the people here at Brown University don't think, what's that commoner doing here on our grounds? But yeah, I have more of a laptop case with me, the plaid shirt's buttoned up. I'm ready for life at Brown University. Although I really, really don't belong here, <laughs> believe me. Witness your eyes on all that is here on this campus and surrounding Providence, all these brick buildings, probably dating back to colonial times. When I'm taking a look at all these old colonial era designed houses, it's almost like taking a step back in time. Maybe things were simpler back then. I will say though, I did not expect Providence, Rhode Island to be so hilly. I thought it was just going to be all flat. I stand corrected. It's quite a hilly city. Getting pretty hot and humid on this fine August morning. It's getting me quite thirsty. I wonder where we can get a nice, refreshing drink. I wonder. Thank you very much. You're now look at this. This is coffee milk. This is the official drink of Rhode Island. I guess it's a combination of both coffee and milk, but not coffee-flavored milk or milk-flavored coffee. It's extremely sweet, which I love. I always love sweet things. But it's also really refreshing. It's ice cold. It's great. Coffee milk. This is the Woonasquatucket River. This is Providence's main gateway to the Atlantic Ocean. It's a beautiful sight, and you can see all of Providence from this view. So, if you'll excuse me, like a true Rhode Islander, I will be enjoying my coffee milk right by the Woonasquatucket River here in Providence, Rhode Island. Hey, it's me from the future. So, um, just wanted to clarify something. Providence, Rhode Island's rivers are kind of weird. First, it sort of starts at the Winnesquatucket River, and then it flows into the Providence River, which is where the tributary goes into, and then it flows into the Narragansett Bay. I think I'm pronouncing these correctly. New England rivers and place names are kind of weird to pronounce correctly. But anyway, Narragansett Bay is where you find all those islands of Rhode Island. So, just wanted to clarify that, make things clear. All right, back to the rest of the video. Have fun. It's sometime a bit later, and we're approaching the downtown, and as you can see, I'm no longer in yuppie professional mode. I'm in 
aloof, gullible, sunburnt tourist mode. Just the type of mode I want to be in for the rest of this video. Because buttoning the shirt on a hot, humid day, uncomfortable. Oh my goodness, this city is huge. You think of tiny little Rhode Island as just some small state with a few towns, but Providence, this sure is a huge city. Just take a look at all the history of this town from colonial era to industrial era. It's amazing. You can evidently see that there's all these very short, winding streets, very narrow, and it's hard for cars to go through this city. It's notoriously difficult to drive here in Providence, Rhode Island, similarly to Boston. It kind of makes sense because the roads of Providence, Rhode Island were built long before the advent of the automobile. Oh, take a look, here's the clock. But yeah, that's why you have all these long, narrow, winding streets because they didn't envision an automobile taking up so many space. People would just walk from building to building where they needed to go back in the day. Originally, Providence, Rhode Island was a big manufacturing hub in the Northeast, from machinery to silverware to textiles to jewelry. Providence had it all when it came to manufacturing. Eventually, it shifted from a manufacturing city to more of a knowledge city, as there's many, many different colleges. Brown University, the Rhode Island School of Design, both of those included in Providence, Rhode Island's list of higher education and universities. Oh, pigeons. How are you today? I see, not well. Without a doubt, Providence, Rhode Island is, in no contest, the largest city in Rhode Island. I mean, the second largest city is about half Providence's population. So for a large city like this, you need a large city hall. I believe after Boston and some other New England city I can't really remember, Providence is the third largest city in all of the New England region. Now that's a large city. Oh, that's probably the clock I actually wanted to see. Now, every so often, the city of Providence, Rhode Island, holds this fire water festival. As you can see, there are these little buoy things. Could that be where the fire comes out in the middle of the river? Because that's exactly what happens. At night, every so often, they'll have some sort of display of all this fire coming out from the river. It's a wondrous sight. If only I could stay here on a night that it did happen. Unfortunately, that's not the case on our visit here today. All right, here we are at Water Place Park. As you can see, more of those possible fire water buoys. But here, you can see a great, a, a very scenic view of the cityscape of the PVD. And of course, Providence, Rhode Island is the state capital of Rhode Island, so we cannot miss out on taking a look at the state capital building of Rhode Island. Seriously, so much to do in Providence, Rhode Island. It's becoming one of my favorite state capitals up there with Richmond, Virginia. As you know, I really liked my visit and experience in Richmond, Virginia and Providence, Rhode Island's really getting up there. It's pretty competitive between the two, which one's my favorite, actually. And we're not even done with Providence. Oh my goodness. Take a look at all that bright white marble. What an impressive Capitol building. Not only does the state Capitol have that large dome up there, but it also has four extra ones adding to the decor surrounding the larger one. One, two, and I assume two in the back. Why is it always the exit we come across first? You know what, I'm not even gonna bother entering. 
we still have quite a lot to do today, so I don't want to waste any time. But if you're from Rhode Island or Providence or have been to the Rhode Island State Capitol, please do tell me how it is on the inside. I'd love to know. Before we go to our next place, Rhode Island State Capitol, everyone. This is not the first capital, though. Looks too new to be the first capital of such an old state. Let's find the old state capital. Look at that. Two Amtrak stations in a row. I doubt we'll find another one anytime soon. So behind me is the old state house. It's under construction a bit or something's going on back there, but this was built during the colonial times of Rhode Island, and this building is where the state of Rhode Island declared its independence from Great Britain. So after getting through a lot of different attractions in this city, believe it or not, we are still not done. Providence, Rhode Island is full of so many attractions. Yeah, quite a lot to explore here in Providence. Take a visit if you're able to. It's worth the visit. Oh my goodness, that is huge! Behind me is the first Baptist church in America. Founded by Roger Williams, who was exiled from the Massachusetts Bay Colony, he was the founder of not only Providence, Rhode Island, but Rhode Island as a whole. He wanted his own Providence plantation to be a place where people could separate the church and the local government, which America later adopted as their own thing. But yes, this is the first Baptist church in all of the United States. And it's significant because baptism is a very prominent sect of Christianity practiced here in America. And I guess it all started from here, maybe? Ay ay ay. Everything's under construction and maintenance nowadays, is it? As you can probably tell, I'm exhausted from having a blast today for these past few hours. The humidity and heat doesn't help either. But there is one more place we need to go to get that complete Providence experience. Hi, can I get a, a chowder and clam cake combo? I'm sorry, was this not obvious? You cannot go to New England without getting... New England clam chowder. I mean, New England and seafood are just so synonymous. So whenever you go on a trip to New England, please indulge yourself in some seafood. I mean, come on, it's New England clam chowder for a reason. It belongs in New England. And, well, these are just enormous. And all full of crab, I guess. Once again, it's fried crab. You cannot go wrong with that. I'm gonna ask you all to close the video now. I need some alone time with some great crab cakes and great clam chowder. So yeah, trying the best New England seafood in Providence, Rhode Island, here at Doom Brothers Seafood. More travels to come. I will see you at the next location.